Welcome back. Once again, we start this demo with a little AI composition I made for the demo. From nothing to something, endless choices arising. Which, of course, I split into stems, so I just have the uh, vocal on its own. From nothing to something, endless choices. Which, as you can tell, is going to be awkward to convert from audio to MIDI in Synthesizer V, so I went in and recorded my own version. Don't laugh. From nothing to something. That's enough of that. Okay, it's really just for creating a Saros voice in Synthesizer V. So let's jump into it. I've loaded my vocal into Synthesizer V and I've done four extract two audios and let's just remind ourselves of the choices. So all in is where all three are selected. Rounding off, transfer off or all off. And the lyrics will just leave as consistent. We always want those. So what did we get or what did we learn? All in basically puts the blocks on the nearest note on the pitch grid, which is cool. And with that rounding off, you see that the notes have been slightly adjusted depending on the actual pitch that's been detected. So they try to get centered up on the, uh, on the block. See how this one's touching the top. And then on this one, it's in the middle. The only advantage to turning the rounding off is this looks more like your performance in terms of the blocks. Moving on, transfer off with rounding back on. The notes, of course, are back on the pitch grid, but the pitch is now 100% generated by AI. And as you can see, it looks quite different than that, which is, you know, my actual pitch from my performance. Of course, with rounding and transfer off, the pitch will be AI and the notes, again, the blocks will be centered to the frequencies. So if I swap between these two, you'll see it's centered, but because this one's forcing it to the nearest note, it's technically more in tune. This one's kind of preserving the tuning from my performance. So there are uses for all four settings, but they all have kind of pros and cons. Let's just go back to all in. And if you look at the pitch extraction and then look at the one with the rounding off, notice it doesn't move. It's actually exactly the same. So as far as the performance, so if we listen to Saros singing this line. From nothing to something. And then on this one. From nothing to something. So they're pretty much identical, but they're not exactly the same because you can actually see the movement in the graph below ever so slightly adjusted, but the shape is the same. So the tracking is very good, but there have been some slight adjustments made in the pitch. And then with the uh, AI, it's almost exactly the same scenario. So with transfer off, we no longer get the natural pitch performance. This this line is based on the pitch performance, but only kind of for the, uh, the strength of the main pitch. And so the rounding has put these on the grid. And this lets them be slightly off the grid because, again, they're centered because they're tracking the pitch a little more closely. So technically, even though this is the AI version, it's a little more true to my original performance. So if I was using Synth V to double a vocal, this would be a better option. From nothing to something. And the one with the transfer off. From nothing to something. Now you may have noticed, 
actually sounds quite different his performance. So let's play the all in version. From nothing, from nothing. So that nothing, the na, is a different performance altogether to, to the all in version. From nothing, from nothing. It's almost like this uh, na has been a little more exaggerated. And in fact, I can see it by the size of the waveform. All in all, they all do a pretty good job at extracting the voice to MIDI. Having everything selected makes for the most natural transfer of the voice to MIDI, but it also puts the blocks on the near semitones, which is important for editing. And without the rounding, the blocks center up on the dominant pitches. And without the transfer, the whole thing switches over to AI controlling the pitch. And with both of these deselected, AI is in complete control of the pitch, and but it's taking its cues from the original conversion, therefore it's not locked to the grid, so you will have slight offsets on the blocks. Okay, so let's look at this area here, where there's a funny thing going on with a rising. So starting with all in. Rising. That sounds overall correct. Okay, turn the rounding off. You notice that the block drops. It's a little bit flat now on that C. Rising. In terms of actual pitch that we're hearing between the two, they're pretty much the same. Rising. Rising. But when we switch to the transfer mode off and the AI takes over. Rising. Obviously, it's thrown in its vibrato and stuff, which you do have control of, but that's another tutorial. And then, of course, with the rounding and the transfer off, you get what you get. Rising. And I would say it's technically closer to the original performance, but again, the AI has made it a bit wobbly sounding. So the big advantage, of course, with using the rounding in is that the notes are on the grid. So I have the option to snapping that down to the B Rising. if I wanted to. But if you turn the rounding off, the block gets centered on the main pitch here. So it's slightly flat. And if I try and move that down, it's still going to be slightly flat. Rising. And of course, the same with all off as well. We're offset here. It's a little more awkward to do editing. If, for example, you want to do backing vocals or something that have a harmony and you just want to go and shift the notes, you certainly don't want to be using these slightly off the grid versions. Main advantage of having the rounding and transfer is you get the most natural pitch and you are on the grid for the blocks to move them about, but you also have the graph parameters available to you of the pitch which means that I could theoretically move the pitch without moving the block. If I just drag around this note here, and if I hold shift and move it, you'll see that I can move it up and it's constrained to just up and down movement. So I can move it to wherever I want. So if I want to move that up to D or an E, the pitch will go there even though I haven't moved the block there. Rising. But we don't want to do that. And with the AI, you don't get that. There's also another parameter that we have to look at in the extract notes, and that is the note detection sensitivity. I'm at 40% because I did some earlier, but the default is 80%. Probably the best point to leave it at, but we'll get to that. So all in is 80% sensitivity. All in 100% is more sensitive and you can actually just see it here. It's basically picked up little noises from before the vocal started and all of them captured this breath before and made a note out of it. But, you know, we can obviously get rid of that and this one did as well. But you can also see there's a lot more detail going on with here there's four notes and here there's six notes and or six blocks as it were. 
So the words are being split up differently. Look here, choices. Now look at in 100%. So clearly we don't really want that. It's still following the same pitch. You can see it, right? Still following the same pitch. But what you don't want to do is have these four blocks representing two syllables. It's just a lot more work when you're editing. And of course, especially if you're not in uh, with the rounding on and your blocks are off the grid, it gets really cumbersome. So all in with 60% sensitivity, pretty much the same, but it definitely decided to move this note down to the B as opposed to the C. And it shouldn't actually sound any different. So here's the, the default 80%. Rising. And here is with 60%. Rising. So they sound the same, but the block is misleading because it's actually on the wrong note. And if I pick that up to move it, it actually moves the pitch as well. So it's not really an ideal situation for editing because really the main pitch is on the C sharp now. So we don't want that. And all in 40%, again, it's done the opposite of what 100% did. It's simplified it down to two blocks instead of three. So there's the er, I, zing. This makes sense. This doesn't because they've basically put er, I, like that full lift all in one note. But if you want to edit this, it becomes a problem. Now, what happens if I split this actually? Yeah, so it didn't move it. I thought it might jump up to where it should be. But again, this is a problem because if we were to move that ourselves, it moves the pitch there. So we don't want that. So basically, 80%, the default, is the choice because 100 is too detailed, too sensitive, and 60 is likely to make some errors when correcting the note placement. And 40% definitely starts simplifying everything so much that uh, it's created these weird anomalies. I also did one more with the transfer off, and we have the same situation, right? Because with the transfer off, here, it's done it correctly, where we have the low, the high, and then the drop there. But if you look at this transfer off at 40%, it's put it onto two blocks. And because the blocks are in charge now, because this is AI, it's literally just made it a continuous note here, and there's no rise between the notes. Rising, rising. Totally an accurate performance. Although it might make for uh, a nice harmony. Uh, Not really. <laughs> okay. So what have we learned? Well, if you have a good vocal performance that you're going to extract to MIDI, then you want to use all buttons in or the rounding off. But to be honest, having all buttons in is better because the blocks will then be on the pitch grid, which makes it easy to edit afterwards, which is kind of important if you're going to create harmonies. But if you don't have the best vocal performance, you definitely want to turn off the transfer function because then the AI takes over and that just gives you all the kind of synthetic versatility that we signed up for. Um, much easier to put things into pitch and certainly it's going to be the quickest way to get a good result. If you really want a natural sounding performance though, then starting with all buttons in and editing the graph for pitch problems is the way to go. Okay, I hope this was useful and I'll see you soon. No limits, no rules, a flow of creation.